Hey guys, Jared with Backwards Animation. Today I'm going to be walking you through body squash and stretch. I'm going to show you how I set up a rig to do squash and stretch and also how I get the body to rotate all with one joystick and slider. Well, just one joystick. Um, so things you're going to need are joysticks and sliders, Duke Basel, and After Effects. Um, so let's get into it. All right, so, so as usual, you start off with a new project, and we're going to create a composition. So go to new composition, new composition. And depending on if you plan to use puppet pin tools or not, it will kind of determine the size of your composition. If you don't need to use puppet pin tools, which I'm not going to do, 1920 by 1080 should be just fine but if you're going to be using puppet pin tools which which you lose the ability to rasterize your layer which means if you scale up your composition it will be blurry um, so if you if you decide to do that just make your composition larger okay so now I've got my composition here next thing I want to do is I'm just gonna create a body shape um, so maybe we'll do something like this and we'll close it up next I'm going to turn on my proportional grid because this will give me the center point and then I can kind of line up the other points to different areas on the grid. You can also turn on your grid to see like a really fine one, but that's just more work than I'm willing to do right now. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna eyeball it. So we'll go like this, and we'll go like this. That looks good enough. I suppose. How do these look? This one's a little too tall. Too short. Yeah, it looks good. All right, then I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna fill it with a uh, solid color. I don't know, we'll do gray for now. Once I have my body set up, I'm gonna name it as such. I'll call it body. Um, and then I'll add, let me lighten it up, and I'm going to add a stroke to it, just because. Just because, why not? Maybe we'll do three. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to go composition, I'm sorry, layer, pre-compose. Or you can hold um, control, control shift C. And then I'm going to call this one body comp. Next inside the body comp, I don't need all that sizing. So right here, this little box within a box is called your region of interest. Scale it around this guy and then come up here to uh, composition and then you're going to see crop comp to region of interest. Click on that and now our composition is the size of our body. If yours has things on it, make it a little bit bigger. Um, but this will work for me for now. Next, what I want to do is I'm just going to create... Uh, this body is going to be very simple. Because, and also what we're going to do is we need to align it to the center. <clears throat> and that looks good. The body that I'm going to make is going to be very simple. Um, I'm really just trying to show you guys uh, a unique way of doing things, and I'm not trying to blow you guys out of the water with design at this point. I'm just trying to get it done so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So now that we have that, maybe I'll do... I'll add some pants to them. Why not? So we'll go uh, 
put a pant line here and we'll go here. The next, we'll just clean this up and we'll scale it to like that. Okay, so these are my pants. And I don't know, maybe I'll make the pants. What color? What color should I do? Kind of a yellowish color. Looks good. Okay, so now that I've got some resemblance of a body shape, I'm going to do a few things. Next, I'm going to pull open all my shape layers and I'm going to I'm going to key the path right at frame 1. Path, boom. And once I have these open, I'm going to kind of collapse this so it's not so large. Just select your shape layer and hit U on the keyboard. And now it only brings up your keyframes. So this is my neutral pose. Next is going to be a turn to his left or her left. So in doing so, this will come over. Maybe I'll widen the turn to it. This will come over. Um, you know, and I'm actually going to pull these guys out too. And I'll make this a little bit larger. Um, and now the question comes, do I want the body to kind of deform as it turns? Um, sure, why not? I can put that in. So this will start to be kind of the back where you see more of his butt and backside. And maybe I'll rotate or pull this out so you start to see more of his belly. And I'll pull this here. And that's looking pretty good. Okay. It looks like a turn, doesn't it? Looks nice. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these, and then I'm just going to come up here on my joysticks and sliders. And this little area, this little guy here, is called a path flipper. So if you do that, okay, a lot of the funky things happen. The reason for that is it doesn't work if you leave a path open, such as this one here in the center. If you leave it open, it wants to close the path. So we're not going to be able to do it with this center guy. But we can do it with the bottom. And we can do it with the pants. And it kind of throws it around, but we'll just um, move it to where it needs to be. And for something like the center line, I'll copy and paste the origin, and then I'll just manipulate it from there. And we'll see where it comes from. So it's almost at that line. So I'm just going to pull it off of this line a little bit. We'll expand these up. And like I did before, I'll move these out. All right, that looks pretty good. So that's my left and right movement. Now where it gets uh, a little more fun is we'll come here and we'll paste origin. Now I'm going to do my down position, nope, up position, sorry. So my up position, I want everything to stretch. This is the stretch portion of it. So I'm gonna maybe move everything up just a hair, but then I'm gonna start here at this guy, stretch it as far as I can go. I'll come to the shoulders, stretch them up, but I'm also going to pull them in just a little bit. So the body is kind of scaling inward as we go. I'll do that, and then I'll come to this little guy, and I'll, and I'll just pull these in to achieve that effect. And then I'll pull this in. All right, so the pants are kind of 
ballooning. I don't want that. So I'll fix that by pulling in the bottom. All right, that looks good. That looks like a stretch to me. Um, that's probably pretty good. If you really want to, really want to push it, um, maybe we can lower the whole thing. So just select your layer and push down on it. So now the whole thing is quite a bit lower, and we can kind of push push it a little bit more. You could probably get away with this technique by just using the scaling option. But if you want to get a little more fine tuned with kind of kind of your shapes, I wouldn't do it that way. Um, we got to make sure that the center point of this part moves in alignment with the scaling too. And we'll pull this up a little more. All right, looks like the body on the bottom is starting to break through just a little bit here. So I'll tweak that. Oops. And we're seeing out the back. All right, now let's do the squash. So I'll paste origin. And we're going to one, we'll pull everything down just a little bit. Two, I'm going to lower the shoulders even more. Three, I'm going to pull them out. I'm going to really exaggerate some of these scenes. And it's okay to go bigger rather than be more conservative with your, your pushing because you don't have to use the full extent of the control. So I'm just going to keep going, pull it all out, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now that I have this set up, another thing that I want to do, and this is where it gets kind of creative and maybe a little bit tricky, is I'm going to create some null objects and these are just going to, these are going to be the control points for my limbs, my arms, legs, and my neck. Because the body is moving around within this composition, you want your limbs to move around in your main comp as well when you control your joystick. So first thing I'm gonna do is the easy one, it's the neck. So I go layer, new, null object. I'm gonna move this to where the neck would be. I have this nice center line there, and I'm just gonna call it neck. Next, I'm gonna hit P. And then as I move down, the neck will move forward a little bit, maybe to there. And then as I go over here, it'll move back a little bit. We'll say to there. Now I'm just gonna paste origin. And as it comes up, try to keep it in line with where you had it before. So if you're, you know, like a mouth, mouse, <laughs> a mouse cursor width away from the top of your neck. Try to keep it a mouse cursor width from the, the, the stretch portion. Now we'll come down, we'll do the same with the squash. All right, so now this control point is moving perfectly with the body. Next, I'm gonna do the same thing for the, the limbs. So we'll do layer new, all object. I'll put this around with the shoulder will be, and this will be his right shoulder, right shoulder. And I'm just gonna duplicate it and call this one left shoulder, left shoulder. And I'll move left shoulder to where the left shoulder will go. I'm gonna turn neck off so I can see what I'm doing. And now I'm gonna push P for both um, positions. And not to confuse you guys too much, but I'm going to actually turn on 3D for all of these as well. Whoops. The reason being is because I'm setting up a rotation and I want the body and the limbs to move in 3D space. So as I move left, 
the left arm goes behind the body, and as I move right, the left arm moves in front of the body. So you need to turn 3D on, and I'm going to be moving these guys in 3D space in just a little bit. So I'll hit P again, hit page down. So this, the left shoulder will come back as he rotates, and the right shoulder will come forward. And I'm just guessing with all these, I don't know for sure that this is how they're going to be perfect. We might need to tweak a little bit. Um, and the cool thing is because they've both kind of moved in the direction they need to go, so that one goes forward, but it's also back. So I'm just going <clears> to <throat> copy and paste both these guys. But now I have to think about spatial relation. So if the left arm comes back, the left shoulder needs to go backwards in Z space. And the right shoulder needs to come forward, although it, we probably don't need to move it because it's already forward. So now that we're facing this way, the right shoulder needs to go backwards in Z space, basically behind the body, and the left shoulder needs to come forward. All right, and then I'm gonna copy and paste these guys back to where they were. Now I'm just gonna move them up, like so, and move this one up. And because there's so much pinching happening within the the body, the shoulders aren't probably going to align right as it goes up. And you'll see what I'm talking about when we get into it. But we can. there's a way we can manipulate the arm so that it stays in line with the body. And then finally, we have the down portion. And these guys can all stay forward in Z space where they're at. And just like that, we're good. Next, we're going to do some for the, the legs. Um, I can probably duplicate these guys and just rename them. So I'll call this one right hip. We'll call this one left hip. Uh, and then I'm going to hit P on the keyboard grab all of my positions. You want to make sure you get them all. And we're just going to move it down. Move it down to where it works properly. So as it goes left, right, that looks good. That looks good. And as it comes up, you got to look. Does that look good or does it go too high? And I think it goes maybe a little bit too high. So I'm going to pull them down. Okay, and then this definitely goes too low. But another thing is we need to pull them in so that they're not so far out. Okay, I feel like these keyframes are working pretty good. So now I can hit U, collapse everything, turn the neck back on. Um, neck can stay exactly where it's at in Z space, you don't need to move it. Next, I'm going to select all my layers, and I'm going to click the square, and I'm going to call this one Body Rotate. All right, so now everything should be moving. Oh, that's not right. But look at that great squash and stretch. So basically what happened is, flip, this is why I don't like flip origins is because it wants to flip it back in the opposite direction. So it kind of messes things up sometimes. So there's one frame for the pants that I got to redo. So here I'm just going to unbind everything by clicking, clicking your control. Then I'm going to come to the body, hit U, and I'm going to find the frame, this one, that is out of whack. And I know that my body is on top, I believe. So I'm just going to paste the origin, and I'm going to manually move everything 
int position. This is the offending frame. All right, that's pretty good. OK, so we'll call it a wrap. Now what we'll do is we'll select all our shape layers, or all, our, all our stuff, make sure body rotates selected, and we're going to bind them up again. Now it should function properly. Look at that. That's a great body rotation. Look at that. And then the squash and stretch. This is key. This is so important to get it down right because you're going to have so much fun animating, animating a character with that much movement. Next, we're going to come back into our main composition. We have our body there. Um, and I'm just going to very quickly create some limbs. I'm just going to do it real fast. Nothing fancy, nothing special. I'm going to turn on snapping, hit Y on the keyboard, boom. So that's my center point in my rotation, looks good. Next I'm going to duplicate the ellipse. If this is my shoulder rotation, this will be my elbow rotation. And I'll move it in, and we can even shrink it down. Actually, you never want to shrink your objects like this. Okay, because that scales your stroke as well. So if you want to scale your, your object down, come into a your ellipse path and then shrink it from here. This maintains your stroke line. That ensures that you don't get any funky um, stroke widths. Next, on the shape layer, I'm going to come to about the center of my circle and then about to the center of this circle. Go there. Hold shift to the bottom and then come click over here. All right, and the next I'm going to pull this shape layer below this ellipse. And then on this ellipse, I'm going to add trim path. And then I'm just going to remove it until it functions properly. Whoops. Pull that like so. And then maybe I need to rotate it just a little bit so we don't see that line. Okay, and then I'm going to come into stroke and I'm going to make a round cap. Okay. Looks a little off and we can just adjust this accordingly. There you go, guys. Well, let me do this real quick. I'll move these into position. OK. Now there you go. Now we have a limb that rotates perfectly around this circle. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate. We're going to snap it to the center of that circle here. Let's see, is that, does that look right? That's a little bit off. Why won't you line up? I think maybe I need to turn off some stuff. There we go, now we have snapped to it. Okay, so if this ellipse size is 63, we'll close it and we'll make this ellipse size 63. It's this simple. Okay, actually, in fact, we don't even need that ellipse, but I'll keep it there just in case. So what we're going to do is we're going to move these guys into place. And we'll keep the forearm all together. And this can move up above. 
I could scale this down. In fact, why don't I do that? Sure, why not? Let's just make life more complicated. Just keep it going. And then I'll move that into position and move this into position. Okay, so I'm gonna call this, this will be his right upper arm. And this will be right, you can call it forearm too if you want, but I'm just gonna do right lower arm. All right, then I'm gonna turn everything back on. Yeah, it doesn't look great, but I don't care. This is just to show you a demonstration. So now we have this arm that rotates perfectly around a joint, and we're going to attach it to right upper arm. And now I just need to create a hand. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to duplicate right lower arm. I'm going to call this, whoops, right hand. And I can get rid of this stuff. We don't need that. And I'm just going to use this circle as my rotation. So, whoops. So now hit Y and we're going to pull this anchor point right to the middle of the hand. There we go. And next, actually, let me, let me rotate it this way and pull it behind the arm. And then this arm, I don't need the circle. Or maybe I do. Oh, well, I'm not going to get into too much right here. So the hand, I'll just do, I don't know. There's a thumb. There's a finger. There's another finger. And I'll just, oops. You guys, this is gonna look so terrible, but I don't care. I really wish I cared. So now I'm gonna rearrange some of these guys. So thumb will go up. Okay. So next, now that I have all this stuff created, I'm gonna duplicate it, move it down. Let's make sure that the hand is connected to the correct thing. Then I'm just going to rotate. Boom. And I'm going to turn off snapping and I'm going to put these right around where they need to be. I'm going to, I'm just going to delete this circle. I don't need it. Okay. And then I'm going to select all these and make them gray, just to match the body. I really don't know what I'm creating, but there you have it. Let's see. So if this rotates down, you see a break. I'm just going to move it in so that you don't see a break. That looks to work just about fine, I guess. Um, one thing you can possibly do, if you want it to rotate downward a little more, you can do like so and just find the right position. Oh, that looks pretty good. So it rotates up and around. Um, but it kind of looks funny there, doesn't it? And it kind of breaks there. I guess what you could do is extend this upward. 
that it's in line. Oh well, I'm not gonna worry about that. We got our elbow looking great. And our hand rotates pretty good too. Except it's got that funky circle. Can I get, lit, get rid of it? There we go, sure, why not? All right, so now let me rotate this all back up. I'll leave one like this and the other one like this, just so we can see how they function together. Let me change the color of these guys. I'll just do red. And let me rename left lower arm. Left hand. Left upper arm. So next, you're going to want to have Duic Basil. If you don't have it, I suggest getting it. Um, I believe it's like Rainbox or something. Just search Duic Basil or just Duic, and it will come up. Um, download it and follow the instructions to get it. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a hand, and then I'm going to create a control for it. So this will be hand, and I'm going to rename it to coincide with the hand I'm using, so I'm going to call it left hand. Okay, so the way that this works is you select your hand layer first. Make sure everything's parented to the, the proper hierarchy. So left hand goes to left upper arm, left upper arm, I'm sorry, left lower arm goes to left upper arm. Next, in this order, and it has to be this order, you select hand, lower arm, upper arm, finally your control. All while, all while holding control. Next, we're going to come to this little guy right here, and it's called Auto Rig and IK. Click that, and we'll see what we get. Look at that. Nice movement. Doesn't that look great? Okay, I'm going to do the same thing for the other hand. So I'll come here to hand, select this hand, create a control, and I'm going to rename it C, um, what is this, right hand? Right hand. Okay, so then I go right hand, right lower arm, right upper arm, right hand in that order, and then I go auto rig and IK. Looking good. This one kind of rotated my hand for some reason. Just rotate it back. Okay. Now that you have that, I probably won't get into the legs because it functions the exact same way as the arms. But now that you have that, here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a null object. Layer. New. Null object. I'm going to call this one left shoulder. I'm going to duplicate it, call it right shoulder, Whoops. hit OK. Make sure that your 3D is now on for the shoulders, and I'm going to turn 3D on for all of this, even that guy too. All right, this is where it gets fun and a little tricky. I'm going to pull my body comp right here. I'm going to select these guys, hit P. I'm going to come back into this comp and hit P. So the right shoulder, I'm going to grab the position pick whip, should go to right shoulder. Left shoulder should go to left shoulder. Now, once that is complete, all you have to do is parent your right upper arm to your right shoulder and parent your left upper arm to your left shoulder. 
One more thing I need to do is I need to move this guy to my parent comp. Okay, and then I can turn it off. And now I come into my composition here. Now I'm gonna center this out and you're gonna see some magic. Look at that. The arms switch. Isn't that just bonkers? All right, so in the neutral pose, the arms are here. As I rotate, one goes behind, the other stays. Oh my gosh, this looks awesome. Really cool. Okay, so that's part of the magic, but the fun is look at this squash and stretch. Oh my gosh. Look at that body, squash and stretching. Um, oh, you know what? I should probably show you about the neck too. So let's just pretend this is his neck. I will center this guy. And I'm just gonna round his corners a little bit more. Maybe I'll do a trim path just so you can see where the neck ends. I don't know. There we go. And then I'll rotate this 180. Oh, but it kind of messes that up. That's okay. All right. So next what I want to do is I'm going to create another null object. And I'll call this one neck. Okay, so my neck here, I'm gonna hit P, and I'm gonna find my neck in here and hit P. Now pick whip your position to the neck position. And then we'll come back in here. And we're gonna parent the neck, which we'll turn 3D on. I don't think we need it, but we'll turn it on. We'll parent it to the new neck object. Okay, now look at that. The neck moves with it up and down. You name it, you got a neck there. All right, one final thing now that the body has been rigged. Let's say that you wanna create a control for the body that moves the arms as well. So if you select the body comp and then we'll create a control for it Position it around the hips and then attach the body composition to the controller. So you'll see right away that the body will move with the controller, but nothing else does. The way to fix that um, is easy, but it kind of throws things out of whack a little bit. So now we need to come to our 3D control points, all of these guys, and we need to connect them to, to the bot, um, you can either put it to the body composition or the controller. I'll just do the controller and look at that. So these are locked into position with this composition. So you can't move them. You'll never move them. Don't even try. So the way to fix it is you just select your shape layer for your arms and put them back into position where they belong. Just like so. And we'll do the same thing with the neck. So, and then it looks like we need to maybe do that. And we'll see if this, does it still work? No, it's not working. Why is it not working? That's a good question. Okay. So, okay, so it does still work. It's just putting them backwards at the neutral pose for some reason. Okay, I can live with that.
if you get in here and you're like, well, I want the arms in front, a simple way of doing it is just grab your shape layers for the upper arm, only the upper arm, and just move it forward in Z space. And now it will adjust everything accordingly. It might take a little bit longer to go behind the body than you might like. Let's see. That'll be good. Okay, so now when we move our body, everything moves with it. Look at that. So now this will allow us to get our rotation. That's what we use this for. All right, and then now I've got a little animation to it and uh, oops. All right, so that will do it, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope that this was easy enough for you to, to grasp and understand. If not, feel free to comment, ask questions. Um, as always, I hope you liked the video. And uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>